Okay, we're going to take a look at our Day 64 Bell Ringer. We have a uh, pedigree here. It says the characteristics indicate, indicated by the blackened figure is probably, is it dominant, recessive, non-dominant, or sex-linked recessive? Well, here's a test taking hint right here. If recessive and non-dominant would mean pretty much the same thing. So <laughs> most likely on a test, if you have two answers that mean the same thing and you're only supposed to mark one correct answer, you can probably eliminate those two. So it'll be the it'll be one that doesn't have another match on there. Um, so let's look at these and see what we can figure out. Both parents are affected, and one, two, three out of five children are affected. So let's think about this. If it were a recessive trait, then dad would be little letter, little letter. Mom would be little letter, little letter. So all they could pass on would be little letters. So all their offspring would have to be little letter, little letter, which means all of them would have the trait. Well, we have these two here, this daughter and this son here, who do not have the trait. So we know that recessive is not an option. Okay. Um, and also, again, if it were sex-linked recessive, then for mom to show it, she would have to have two X's. With that recessive trait, and then dad's only X would be recessive, so that means everybody who had an X would have that recessive trait. So this son would have dad's X. So if dad had an X with that trait, then the son, this son would have that trait also. So we know it's not sex like recessive, so that leaves dominant. So let's see if dominant would work out. There's two ways to have a dominant trait. They could, they could be big letter, big letter homozygous dominant or big letter little letter heterozygous okay so if they were big letter big letter then everybody would only get big letters okay so that means everybody would have the trait so again that wouldn't work but if they were heterozygous and we'll use we'll use these for disease whatever the disease might be so if he were big d little d and she were big D, little d, then either one of them could give a big D to this one, giving him the trait, and a big D to her, giving her the trait, and a big D to him, giving him the trait. So that's not a big deal. These two who do not have the trait would have to have two recessive alleles. So if both parents were heterozygous, that would still work out. Um, dad could give her a little d, and mom could give her a little d, and she would not have the trait. And dad could give him a little d, and mom could give him a little d, and um, he would not have the trait. So, um, it would work out being a dominant trait. That will be our correct answer. Dominant, and then, but with both parents being heterozygous. And then it says, so what are the genotypes of the parents? And we just figured out that both parents would have to be heterozygous because they would both have to be able to give little d's to these two children, but they don't have the trait, so we know they have big d's also, so both parents would be heterozygous. It says heterozygous dominant. Well, heterozygous is going to show the dominant trait anyway. So heterozygous. Usually on heterozygous, we don't have to put the dominant word there because... If they're heterozygous, they will show the dominant trait. Okay, and then the next question says, if one parent has type A blood and the other parent has type B blood, what blood type will their offspring denoted by the white square and circle have? Now, if we were looking at these as being a dominant trait, well, A is dominant and B is dominant. So if these two are showing the recessive trait by being not shaded in, that means they're showing the recessive trait, they would have to be, the only recessive blood type is O, so they would have to be blood type O. And that's that for the bell ringer. A, B, D.